Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet that we're testing today is Norma's 156 grain Oryx in .264 diameter, which we've got loaded up for 6.5 Creedmoor, which will run through our Savage Axis 2 from 100 to 500 yards. Of course, this is a bonded core lead soft point bullet. Now, today's video was made possible by one of our viewers who very kindly donated the bullets to us, and we're sure that he is just as excited as we are to see how they'll perform. So let's get started. This is a solid performer for a Walmart gun. Yeah, dude. We gotta try taking this thing out to a thousand at some point. Yeah, it's gonna be cake. The only thing that might limit us is the optic a little bit. Like, I just don't know if it has the adjustment travel needed for that range. Yeah, and the uh, reticle lines are a little bit thick in there too. Solid. Nice. Man, this is one heavy ass bullet for 6.5. What's the grain weight? 156. Woo! At least uh, six five creed more, I guess I should say. All right, you just cleat us. You just cleat us. No, you know you kind of have to chamber one. Yeah, rookie mistake. <laughs> Great shot. Sweet. This is our second time running Norma's Oryx. Last time we ran the 180 grain offering in 30 caliber through our 300 Winchester Magnum. From a cursory inspection, we can see that expansion was extremely wide, even given the relatively moderate muzzle velocity we get with this heavy of a projectile in 6.5 Creedmoor. Estimated impact velocities today were calculated using JVM ballistics, and you'll notice that we ran this bullet from 50 to 400 yards. Usually with the 6.5, we run from 100 to 500 yards, but when we ran this bullet's sister, the 156 grain Norma Alaska, we found that at 500 there was zero expansion, and as a result we were unable to catch the fully FMJ'd projectile. So taking that lesson into account, we decided to just skip the 500 and do 50, as we feel anyone loading this kind of bullet into this kind of cartridge is probably intending to run it at much closer ranges anywho. Taking a look at the 50, we've got massive peeling on all sides with that electrochemically fused 
used lead, hugging the copper jacket tighter than a dog with a bone. The 100 has good expansion, which ends much higher up the shank than the 50. The 200 is almost the same as the 1, except the peeling almost seems to be a bit more even. At 300, we have a much narrower recovered projectile. The bullet didn't peel back as much as the earlier ranges, but it's still a very good result. Rounding things out at 400, we have minimal expansion as compared to the earlier ranges. It looks more like the tip was blunted rather than expanding outwards. Getting into our graphs, we've got impressive numbers at the earlier ranges. Just to keep things in perspective, though, since we tested from 50 to 400 instead of 100 to 500, it isn't fair to compare these results directly to other bullets we've tested in this chambering. That said, we have 2.97 and 2.94 times original size of the 50 and 100 respectively, darn near three times original size, which is fantastic expansion. We see this drop off at each further range till we reach 400 yards, where we get 1.97 times original size, which while markedly less than the previous ranges, is still very good and a figure which would give me confidence in using this round at that range. This gives us average expansion of 2.54 times original diameter, which is quite impressive. Now the weight retention distribution is much more even. We of course lose a little bit more weight at the closer ranges and retain more as we move further out and have a lower impact velocity. Overall weight retention of 96% is extremely high for a lead bullet and rivals the figures put up by some monolithics. This is due to a couple of factors, primarily the bonded core design in which the lead core is electrochemically fused to the copper jacket. Norma has clearly figured out how to do that extremely well as we see ex outstanding weight retention with such massive expansion. That expansion, even at the lower muzzle velocities we started with, due to the round's relatively high weight in this chambering, may directly be a result of the necessity of, generally speaking, using pure lead in the bonding process. When electrochemically fusing bullets, manufacturers generally have to use lead, which hasn't been hardened with tin or antimony, so it's much softer than lead we would typically find in a mechanically locked bullet. This allows it to theoretically open up easier, which is something we see here, as we did get 1.97 times expansion at 400 yards, with an estimated impact velocity of 1770 feet per second. The concern with this is that in a real high step and magnum chambering, we might see significant separation at much higher impact speeds. This isn't something we witnessed when running 180 grain Norma Oryxes through our 300 win mag though. In fact, we got best in class expansion of 2.99 times original size with 89.6% weight retention and at several ranges we exceeded 3 times original size. Which all just goes to show how tough bonding is is. So then the question remains, is there really a downside to bonded bullets? Well, the only real issue I think one could run into is that with such wide expansion and a lower impact velocity, there exists the potential for a much shallower wound channel. A bullet opening up so wide, even with the amount of weight it's carrying, could decelerate so quickly that it isn't able to push deep on much heavier game. That being said, it would significantly reduce the likelihood of a pass-through, which would increase the amount of energy transferred to the target. So so how does that all relate to the 156 grain Norma Oryx in 0.264 diameter? Well in 6.5 Creedmoor I think this would be a fantastic bullet for deer 300 yards and in. I would venture to say it'd probably be alright for black bear as well. And if you're hunting in the woods in the Midwest, Northeast, Deep South, or out here on the Olympic Peninsula, it may be the perfect medicine for you. I personally wouldn't run this bullet in this chambering for elk due mainly to the prior concerns I covered with the potential for reduced wound channel depth, although I'm sure someone somewhere has used this bullet to take elk, caribou, or I suppose reindeer, considering where it was manufactured. And it's not the first thing I'd think to load next time I go hunting pronghorn either, not because it doesn't have the ability to take that class of game, rather just because I'd prefer a lighter, faster, slipperier bullet for that application. Where I think this bullet would really shine would be in a faster chambering like the 264 Win Mag. But if you plan on finding yourself in the densely packed deer woods where shots won't exceed two to three hundred yards and your goal is to turn your 6.5 into a brick throwing brush gun then this bullet may be right for you. If you got something out of today's content consider helping us out with a like or a comment and if you'd like to see more content like this make sure you're subscribed. It is fall right now and we're smack dab in the middle of hunting season so our posting speed will be somewhat reduced for the near future but we look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching and god bless.